Want to learn about stocks, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, and the metaverse? Join richtv.io. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm your host, Rich, here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest, the CEO of HPQ Silicon, Bernard Tourlion. How are you doing today, Bernard? Very good, very good. Very excited to have you on the show. And we got some big things we're going to talk about. And we, it's always nice to have you back on the show and have updates. And I love the festive sweater. You're in the Christmas spirit. So first of all, uh, I want to ask you, With it's been a very productive year for HPQ. You transitioned to a tech company that was huge and started the QRR and onboarding the French R&D team. Can you go through these accomplishments for us and what it means for the company? Yes. Well, the, the first one may not sound that big, you know, transforming from a resource company to a tech company, but for HPQ, it is. Um, a lot of the investors that are interested, interested in what we are doing, which is basically green tech, um, basically modernizing industrial processes, making them up to what's required in the 22nd centuries and moving on in the future, um, didn't like the, the the connotation mining, okay? And in a certain way for what we were doing, having my, a mining operation attached to what we're doing, I think was a negative in the sense that it would require a lot of capital, a lot of management time over dealing with a resource, delineating resources, as opposed to focusing on the technology. In our case, which is specifically, we transform quartz into silicone, it's the second most abundant uh, element on the earth crust. So finding resources to, 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 to use in our machine is not a problem right now. It's not, it's not an issue now, it's not gonna be an issue in the future. So, so for us, converting or, or basically transitioning from a, a resource company to a tech company made the story easier to sell. Okay, and we also became a tier one, which is one level higher up into the quality on the on the on the, on the TSX venture. And it opened doors. It was part of a strategy. It, it might sound completely stupid, but when you're a tech company listed as a resource company, if you want to do serious financing with institution and they want to do a prospectus financing, or they want to discuss those issues with you, you can't do it because you don't have a resource to, to back it as a mining company. As a technology company, it's our technology. It's our patent. It is our know-how. It is what we're doing, where, the, where we are in the market that plays into it. So it opens the door uh, to more potential investors coming in, all green funds, all those issues can come in. Okay, fortunately, it happened in 2022, which was maybe not the year when everybody was really looking into it. But the good thing, it's behind us. It's done. Yes. Okay? Uh, and people don't realize it's actually as long and painful a process as going through an original listing because it is. It is that. It's just that we, you know, we just didn't stop trading. We continue to trade and continue. For our shareholder, it looks seamless. But behind the scene, it was not seamless. And you can see the transition now. Like uh, Q3 was our first quarter as we were a mining company. So uh, not a mining, but a technology company. So all M MDAs had to change. Uh, how we present our situation has to change. Our risk factors suddenly gain, you know, 10 times longer. So that was, that was, that was, you know, that was issue number one. Issue number two is after many, well, not issue, but, you know, milestone number two that's really keen. After many, many years of saying we would eventually... <laughs> it's like being, being being sort of like saying we're coming we're coming we've actually arrived we've made the qrr is now working we're now making silicon we've now entered into the uh the r d development phase which is basically you know starting to make silicon improve it doing it but there's a lot of milestone we reached this year we've proven that we the technology scales up okay and that's that's a massive thing the first machine was the size of a washer and dryer and this one is the size of a house so um there's a lot of impact when you start to do these things. Um, Pyrogenesis has put a lot of team, a lot of personnel who work for us. They've, they've actually hired a very top guy that knows a lot about silicone operations. That's now running that part of the, of the operation. And we're seeing the advantage in, in, in what is that given to us. So I'm very happy that's finally done because it's, it's a showpiece investment. Okay. 
I can now bring in investors. When I talk to investors from New York, when I talk to investors from Europe, when I talk about them, it says, okay, you guys can come to Montreal, go take a look, sign an NDA, go take a look at the machine. And they're going to be impressed. And which brings me to my third subject, because we are, we've onboarded Novasium this year. Uh, and Novasium are people, basically three, three guys with a lot of expertise into silicon manufacturing, silicon purification, value-added projects into it. And I brought them to do an audit for me um, of the QRR. And, you know, it came out very, very positive in the sense that, you know, they do realize it's it's a great machine. It's a great potential. Uh, and they're going to help us, HPQ, Pyro, uh, make it better and finding ways of generating even more potential value out of the system. So, uh, so, and so the onboarding of Novasium, oh, it's only been six months. I at, in, internally, I'm starting to see a lot of benefit to this, okay? And I truly believe that that will start to transpire more in the public realm uh, during during 2023. And I think that will be also a very surprising advantage to, to HPQ shareholders. Now, congratulations on all your milestones hit and all your success thus far. 2022 overall has been a really tough year for growth companies, Large caps, small caps, penny stocks across the board when it comes to share price. Mm -hmm. What would you say to investors who are looking at HPQ today? Um, if you look at what's going to be the driving sector okay, for the economy, it's greening of technology. It's reducing carbon footprint. It's rethinking. There's a, there's a lot of thematics, which HPQ checks all the, the marks. I'll give you an example. For many, many years, basically, everybody talked the concept of offshoring your production of your dirty industrial processes. So you offshored into an area where the environmental controls didn't play that much. Basically, they were making it cheaper, but you know it wasn't good for the environment. Now we've gone into a concept where uh, people are looking at ESG principle. They're looking at those development, and they now want to. And they're also realizing this was something that happened in 2022 is a strategic important where your raw material come from, okay? Well, silicon is at the tip, the bottom of everything that's related to silicon electronics, everything that's related to solar, everything that's really related to silicon, okay? And that expertise and that capacity to make that material has sort of disappeared, moved over to China. Uh, same thing that's happening in silicon for batteries. All the manufacturing is, uh, of the materials is made of China. Well, there's a new law in the United States that says if you're using not North American made material, doesn't count in your batteries, you, you, lo you lose out. So there's now a need for reshoring technology. It's really becoming a real issue everywhere. Okay, And to do that, to reach that goal, well, they need, we need a new processes to make the raw material, the new ingredient material, because people are not going to want to bring back the old polluting plant. Well, HPQ, because we've been doing this in 2015, here we are. We're not talking that we're going to say this is, this is where we have a pilot plant. We'll have a roadmap to go to commercial size, roadmap to be able to work with people that are interested in going to polysilicon, the electronics, to solar, to all those materials. So we're perfectly positioned. So if you look at the overall of the market, it is massive. There's going to be a million ton shortage of silicone in the coming years that will demand new plants. I believe the HPQ or the QRR were well positioned to be one of the dominant players in that area. Because our new plants, the new plants are going to have to be based on new systems that are much more ESG compliant, and that's what we've been doing. Second of all, silicone for batteries. It's another big market, but it's at, it's at the beginning step. Once again, it's all Chinese-made material that's leading the industry. But there's going to be demand for more localized production. Because another issue that happens is if you move the type of industrial production we do far away, then there's a carbon footprint of bringing, of bringing it to the material. So there's a carbon footprint when you make it, carbon footprint when you transport. Well, people think that's oh, not really that important. Well, the EU just said... There's a carbon tax. There's a tax now based on the carbon footprint of the material. So all those big <clears throat> microeconomic uh, wins, okay, are in our back, are to our advantage, okay? So we're well positioned for this. We're well positioned to, to develop and we're well positioned to take advantage of this. Now, 
What we did in 2022 means that starting in January 2023, we're well positioned, we're even better positioned for that. Okay. Uh, that, and, and, yeah, go ahead. That actually leads me to my next question. What are your main goals for 2023 for HPQ? Well, main goal is the QRR demonstrating getting it, you know, starting to produce higher purity material. That's that's those are one of our Q goals. Okay. Our one well, second of our Q goal is really refining our silicone for battery initiative. Okay. Um, we've been working a lot internally with Novasium, how we're gonna present this and package it and develop it. So that's gonna be another thing. Uh, we also have a lot of exciting um R and D initiative that are gonna come out of what Novasium is doing, which have application for, for where we're going. We're also going to have the fume silica, which is another one of those very interesting, you know, value proposition we're going to be coming to the market. That's going to be, that's going to be, you know, in 2023, it's going to be at the pilot plant phase. So we have these multiple areas. Um, if I stopped it down to, to multiple things, the QRR demonstrating that we can make pure material cheaper, getting us all the numbers for growing commercial scale. Battery initiative is 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 working very very aggressively to be able to become a North American suppliers of micro size silicone powders for for battery space, um, and Novasium in addition to all of them is going to be you know redeveloping the hydrogen part of the of the business where the ingredient one of the ingredients used to make the, the the hydrogen because we're not going electrolysis we're going hydrolysis is going to be silicone so those are three big material. At the same time, as we demonstrated, our technology is much more efficient so that people realize that if they want to build, uh, because I'm hearing, I'm in the beginning discussion of a lot of people that want to repatriate all the value change toward making electronic purity chips uh, material. Because, you know, you can't repatriate chip making if you don't repatriate the entire value chain. And the basically the missing block to all of this, as surprising as it is, is the one to make the first part of the value chain, which is making the, the two end silicone material for electronic to, to be used as feedstock. And that we have a very good proposition that we're working with Novasium to present. So I'm very optimistic about 2023. Um, you know, green headwinds are not changing. Uh, there's going to be funds. Funds are going to look to invest into green to companies with companies with new technologies are going to be looking for it. So I'm, I'm very positive for it in a certain way. It was painful during 2022, but as we come into 2023, we got the QR working, we'll have fume silica working and we'll have all those other projects. I, I'm very excited about 2023. If there was one thing that you would want shareholders to know about HPQ, what would that be? Ah, uh... It was just just one thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we were talking about earlier how you feel like right now you guys are better positioned than ever. Oh yeah, I know it's 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 not it's not even a question of better better position. It's it's one thing I want I want people to understand. That we've been saying for a long time that we would be here. Okay, so I understand a lot of people have heard me say, you know, we will eventually. What well, we're there, we're making it now. Okay, so we are here. We are at the beginning. We finally got ourselves into the, you know, the the racetrack. Everything we're on, we're on the starting blocks. Everything is really going in the right direction. And for the first time, also, I got a feeling like I, because COVID actually created issue regards to controlling your timeline. So that that was also a very big problem. I finally get a feeling, get a good feeling that this is behind us, so I can get a better control over what's going on with regard to the development timeline. I also understand what we do. We, you, you know, there are some projects that are long, massively long lead time. Okay. And there's other projects that have shorter lead time. So what I needed to do and what I worked very hard at doing is creating a balance between having long lead time projects that are finally moving forward. At the same time, I have multiple shorter lead time that can issue more news so I can talk, I can create more excitement what we're doing. Uh, we were also doing a lot of marketing in Europe a presentation in Europe, business development in Europe. Why? Well, contrary to Canada and the United States, silicone is a strategic material. So there's an even bigger listening to that. Uh, the market there is are, are, are very big. Australia is also making a big spiel. They want to become also a big player in all those issues. So none of these people are competitors to HPQ. 
Okay. Uh, it's like all the people that are doing silicon work for batteries are not competitors to HPQ. We're not doing analog material. We understand what's in the silicon for analog. We're not. We're there to offer them solution to make their product better, as as we make money doing that. What is the best way for anyone, any shareholders, future shareholders that have any questions about HPQ Silicon to get in touch with the company? The best one is to send me an email through our general email at info at hpqsilicon.com. Either I will reply or a director of, commu of marketing communication will reply. Um, to be totally honest, we try to stay far away of social media where we directly communicate just because you lose control over the communication. So we prefer to have these type of videos where we introduce, where you ask us the question, we answer. Uh, and then we answer, we answer directly. If we can't answer, we can't answer. You know, they're, 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 you know, we're always at a disadvantage when we're in the public toward a lot of people in the sense that, you know, what, whatever we say is recorded and, and the regulators look at what we say. So we have to be very cautious what we say. So I can only really talk about what's been done. I can give general indication where we're going. And then we got to go through the disclosure through our website. And we'll have, uh, I'm hoping, you know, Q1 will have a new website up and running. Fantastic. Here with the CEO of HPQ Silicon, Bernard Turleon. Now, I must remind everyone that Rich TV Live is strictly for information and education purposes. Please do your due diligence, do your research before you invest in anything we talk about or discuss. In saying that, I believe this is a company that is grossly undervalued, underappreciated, and underexposed. Take a look at the symbols, HPQ in Canada, HPQFF in America. Put it on your radar put on your watch list. Bernard, thank you for joining us. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we wish you, you a wonderful and successful 2023 and beyond. Thank you. Always a pleasure. And thank you guys for watching. If you're not winning, you're probably not watching. We bring you the winners. We bring you the news, CEO interviews, and we bring them to you first. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year from my family and from Rich TV Live to yours. And Bernard, thank you for joining us again. Have a happy holidays. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you soon.